So welcome back to yet another week of uh, our little political show. Um, I have Pam Driscoll with me, and I'm Joe Tyndall. And uh, we're just, you know, going to comment on the news. And or so the, the news that's not news. And sometimes things don't get reported, so they are not news, and it's good to uh, bring them up. Uh, this is a call-in show. It is. And we now actually do have an announcement in the weekly. So it's, oh, it's, it's apparently ongoing. a perm ongoing permanent announcement, assuming uh, for some reason it doesn't disappear. But, uh, um, yeah, there is the number on the screen. And if you want to argue with us or dis discuss, um, that's the number to call. And, and we only have one line. One line. So we're hoping that that you're conscious of that and, and you make your statements. And even though we love the call, like we yeah. had a half hour conversation yeah. with Rick yeah. and Kathy called twice a couple, of, I think our first show. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm thinking one call per show is a good thing per person, right? Well, yeah, but again, it depends on the topic. I mean, if we've got an interest, I mean, last time we had a really interesting discussion. You know, he asked the question, did we have a solution on how to get out of Iraq? Right, and he only called once. So. Yeah. And and the thing and the thing is that, you know, the truth is no. I mean, it's a mess. Right. It is a mess. You know, it's the same problem that we had with Vietnam. How do you get out of Vietnam? And eventually, eventually, it got to the point where our troops weren't fighting. Um, there's a great documentary on that called Sir No Sir. And um, and the the mass demonstrations did make a difference. Um, despite despite. There, during the, the demonstrations, it was denied they were making a difference. Yeah. But later, Nixon did concede that that did affect him, and it did. Oh, it drove him nuts. Yeah. But in terms of policy, I don't think it had any any real effect. Yeah. You, you know, I, I I wonder. You know, it made him uncomfortable. It made him have to uh, invent all kinds of nonsense to justify what he was doing. But. I mean, and, and the aftermath is pretty serious. I mean, that's when marijuana became a Schedule One drug, and it was to give the police the tools they need to do the job, which was to harass the hippies. So, you know, which that's... I think Bernie Sanders is trying to get um, the federal delisting of yeah. marijuana from the class. So I have some breaking news. You do? do well, we had a good do conversation do 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 going there. We should have left I that one I know, go. but we talked about that last week. So... <laughs> the breaking news is my car got broken into about an hour and a half ago, and I didn't have anything valuable in there other than my bag of information and three new release books. So, Joe and I have come up with a great list of, of uh, topics mm -hmm. to talk about, but mm -hmm. I just want whoever took that bag, could you just return the books to the library, please? Thank you. <laughs> That's the breaking news. So it was at Holiday Market yep. in the parking lot, Lane Events Center. And just another reminder, don't leave things in your vehicle. Oh, okay, like phone call. The phone's ringing so soon. So welcome to the show. What's your name? Uh, this is Pat. Pat. So do you have a comment, thought, uh, or otherwise? Well, yeah, I'd like to comment on, uh, on the... Oops. <laughs> Uh, sorry, I got another call waiting, but uh, I'll let it go. Uh, yeah, I'd like to comment on the Democratic de on uh, Saturday. Oh, ah, the debate. Yes. Yeah, uh, Hillary Clinton was. Uh, uh, she she's showing the ignorance that uh, that just about everybody has about Islam, and uh, that includes Obama. Yes. When she said uh, that. We were counting on we need the uh, Muslims to help protect us against the radical Muslims. She said uh, we need their. Uh, we're basically counting on them to uh, stand between us and uh, radical Islam. Mm -hmm. And and she thinks that bombing them is going to help that. Well, yeah, but I mean uh, that, that uh, bombing them is not going to hurt. Oh, well, I, you know, it's interesting, because when I heard her make that statement, I watched the debates pretty carefully, um, I think her point was that we don't want to ostracize ourselves from all Muslims, because obviously all Muslims are not violent radicals. That's what I took. And so the idea of, like, what Trump said, you know, no, no Muslims should be allowed to come to this country at mm -hmm. all, is a, is a way to make make us more disenfranchised with the Muslim people who are not all bad people. There's, you know, there's a few bad Christians, there's a few bad Muslims, there's a few bad of 
yeah. any group. So I think that was her point. What did you think her point was? Well, I'm, I think that was her point, too. Oh. Uh, but the problem is that, uh, you know, Muslim, uh, uh, Islam is a violent religion. And uh, as most uh, apostates will say, uh, many experts, I don't know how many, uh, probably half of the ones that, that I've read that commented on it at all, said there's only one Islam. There's not a, uh, a peaceful Islam and a violent Islam. There's only one Islam. And, uh, you know, they are either in violent jihad or they're practicing taqiyya, which is uh, to ingratiate themselves with their host country and not stand up, not to, not cause any trouble, and wait until they reach a point where they are a majority. Yeah. Um, you know, on, on the question of violence, I mean, let's, let's look at history on that. Um, this is their turn, okay? During the Middle Ages, the Christians were pretty violent. Um, you know, they burned people at the stake, they, you know, ran the Inquisition, you know, torture people if, if you don't agree with them. But I would like to insert in here, but not all Christians were violent. Not all Christians right. were. And okay. not all Muslims are violent. So, either. in other words, when it's, you know, the dominant religion in an area, um, it does sort of tend to misbehave. And if you go back even further in history, I mean, read the Old Testament. I mean, that's all about, um, you know, the Jewish people. Um, you know, wiping out the Canaanites and an eye for an eye. all that good stuff, and you know, stoning people. You know, if you if you're a child and you're rebellious, they take you to the edge of the village and stone you to death. You know, um, if you eat raisins, they take you to the village and stone you to death. If you you know homosexual, they take you to the village and stone you to the edge of the village and stone you to death. Uh, all that kind of stuff. I mean, that's so. So Judaism had its period when it was powerful and did that. Christianity had its period when it was powerful and did that. And now, because we've sort of mucked around in the Middle East a lot um, and, you know, interfered with sort of the political evolution, what's left is organization around religion, and we have brought that stuff right to the surface. Is, is, well, is, that, a, is that a fair statement? Uh, go ahead. No, I'm, I'm asking you, what do you think about that as a, as a concept? Well, as a concept, uh, it doesn't hold water. Ah, it is okay. like a bucket with uh, no bottom in it. Okay. Uh, the uh, Muslims killed, uh, at least by uh, estimate of uh, Bill Warner, uh, a professor in, in North Carolina who studied uh, Islam, yeah. I don't know, most of his life, about 270 million people in its 1,400-year history. And if you remember, they took over, uh, they, they took over the, uh, well, first of all, uh, Turkey, uh, Jordan, Syria, mm -hmm. Egypt, Israel was all Christian. Mm -hmm. And it was all dominated by Islam. It destroyed, killed, and uh, converted people not because of uh, uh, they the, uh, were talked into it, but by the sword. Oh, yeah. And uh, there are uh, 485 wars or battles carried out by uh, Islam against Europe. And uh, the Crusades, there are about, well, there's 16. Okay. And uh, they spent, and they were trying to get back land taken from them by the Muslims. Okay. So uh, 458 battles and uh, 270 million people, and they were finally uh, beaten back <coughs> the first time <coughs> at the Battle of Tours. And uh, they turned around and hightailed it until they were out of Europe. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's one thing uh, y y y to say that it's not a, a, a religion of violence is just to uh, be completely ignorant, because it, this is a this is one test. I mean, if you uh, see, uh, we have different ways of thinking. The uh, West has a way of thinking. Muslims have a way of thinking. They are raised from the time they are children to hate Jews, hate infidels, uh, to want, and to want to spread Islam to every country on earth. Yeah. And, this is not a, a, and this is not a casual thing for them. This, this is ingrained in, in their minds from the time they are children. Mm -hmm. uh, Wafa Sultan, uh, author, reported, uh, said that uh, when she was in Syria, her and her husband applied for uh, 
immigration to the United States, she went to her children's school to pick up her daughter, who was in the first or second grade, and there was a math book there on a desk. And she opened it up to see, you know, just to take a look at it while she was waiting, and the question on the, the first page she opened was, there are five infidels. If you cut off the heads of three, how many infidels are left alive? This is the way they're taught. And then Noni Darwish, who uh, is Egyptian, reported that when she was a child, mm -hmm. uh, the, there were nursery rhymes like kids have in school, and, uh, you know, stories, scary stories. Well, one was that Jews eat children, mm -hmm. little children. And another was that they use their blood to make cookies. Okay. So and and these were made these were passed around by adults by teachers not yeah. by they were, they were taught to them by adults mm -hmm. and this is just the, that this is just the beginning this is the way they think now oh well let me say something yeah. um, not all Muslims there, we have Muslims that live here in our country as well and they I mean you're you're making a blanket statement that they're all taught this from some anecdotal anecdotal stories they are well. I, I don't. I don't agree. I don't think all Muslims are taught to be hateful. Uh, um, I do think that it's a problem, and I don't. So, your so what is your solution? So, you think, you know, bring in, bring on the bombs? Is that your solution? Uh, this is an ideology. This is a, a a war of ideology. So, so how do we win it? Yeah. How do we win it? What's the, oh, what's yeah, the strategy? Oh yeah, that's skipping over an awful lot of stuff. Well, we we only have so much time, and we did talk about this subject for a half hour last week, yeah. so we have other... Yeah, I saw it last week. I, I didn't catch all of it, but yeah. any, anyway, uh, the real solution in the long run is education. Okay. People I'll, have I'll to understand what Islam actually is. And uh, I, I bought a book uh, from the University uh, U of O bookstore about Islam. And, uh, well, first of all, uh, Mohammed is Islam. Mm -hmm. He invented Islam. He created Islam. There is no Islam without Muhammad. Uh, his everything, uh, the Quran was supposedly messages that he got from Allah. Mm -hmm. And then the Hadith were his, uh, the things he did or didn't do or saw being done and allowed to be done, and they govern every part of, uh, of the lives of Muslims. Mm -hmm. So in this book of 330 pages, exactly four pages were uh, dedicated to Mohammed. And that is from his birth to his death. And the rest was 326 well, pages of uh, drivel. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we need to do is actually teach what is taught in the Quran, yeah. in the Hadith. Yeah. And uh, what's taught is violence. And the idea that, uh, for example, the idea that a person can say, I'm a Muslim, but, for example, I don't, uh, I don't pray five times a day. Okay. Well, so they can make excuses for not pay, praying five times a day and get away with it. But if they actually refuse to pray five times a day, they are a traitor to Islam, and they can be, uh, they, and therefore an apostate and can be killed by any other Muslim. I understand, I understand that set of problems. Um, and it's not just in the Middle East. I mean, you were having this kind of stuff. For example, there's a huge um, Islamic population both in France and Great Britain, and there are serious problems with um, Sharia law and you know, people sort of taking it into their own hands and doing that kind of, you know, that kind of stuff within these uh, secular societies. Um, but the question is, what is driving the stuff going on in the Middle East? I mean, we basically took a secular society, which was, you know, had a horrible dictator, and I'm not going to minimize in any way how horrible Saddam Hussein was. Um, and specifically, uh, one of the things that Christopher Hitchens used to run around with was a film, 16 millimeter film, of Saddam Hussein essentially taking power, um, bringing his entire council into this room and selecting half of them and uh, getting the other half to actually, you know, handing them guns and have them kill the first half. So, I mean, it's pretty gruesome. Um, I mean, it is, it's a horrible film, but at the same time, 
what have we done? We've destabilized what was a sec essentially a secular society with you know, well, women's rights to a degree. And, and we also backed Saddam Hussein. The U.S. backed Saddam Hussein. That's right. We put so, him in, helped him in, stay, put him in power and helped him stay there. You know, well, the, the, uh, you know, when this, the, there have been two uh, purges or, or uh, what you call jihads in Islamic history. The first one ended at the Battle of Tours. The second one was uh, with the o Ottoman Empire ending yeah. at the end of World War One, because mm -hmm. they backed, they made a mistake and backed the Germans. Uh, so the you know Mid East was divided up, mm -hmm. and some people yeah. believe that this is the third one. But uh, you know to blame it on the U.S. It, it, well, I'm I have read. I'm not uh, blaming. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm just saying, you know, did we have a hand in destabilizing what was? you know, essentially a secular country. Well, I, I don't, I'm not really concerned with Iraq, because okay. I, I, I'm looking at the bigger picture, and the experts on Islam say that, although they're, they're, they disagree on the reason, but this, this jihad started in the 1970s. Yeah, okay. And why exactly, no one seems to be sure. Well, but it's could, been gradually could, increasing with could, violence, could have, with... Could it have anything to do with, for example, going in and displacing Mossadegh in Iran in 1953? Uh, that was not good on our part. Oh, okay. No, I mean, that was, that was bad. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, and that, that didn't help. And, but, and, but there's and no the pattern has continued essentially since then. That caused all of uh, the trouble that we have now. Okay, Pat, unfortunately, we talked about this last week's yeah. show, and, you know, it's kind of like... It's, an, it's definitely an interesting conversation. Um, should, maybe we should let it go a little longer. Oh. Uh, well, you know, Make some, one more point. One, 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 you, get one, you get one more shot. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, well, some people aren't interested in Islam. I mean, some people don't want to think about it. Mm -hmm. They don't want to talk about it. Yep. They don't want to know about it. And, uh, you know, I understand that. So uh, I thought you might be interested in talking about uh, something topical. Yeah. No, we are. Definitely. Yeah. Somebody talked about it last week for 30 minutes, and therefore that's done. I no, mean, we're, uh, a long, we're a long way away from that, but yeah. Yeah. We only have 40 I minutes left of the show. I got interested in so. Islam, uh, well, about the time that uh, the gunman shot up that, you know, uh, Prophet Muhammad cartoon festival down there in Texas. Mm -hmm. And I started reading, and I had to read... I'd say about eight books before I started getting a handle on it. And now I'm up to, well, it was about 12 books that I felt that I understood, understood it pretty well. Because there's just no good source that tells you everything. I mean, there's always a question. And it's an unending subject and in, in, incredibly important today. Agreed. And, uh, but some people aren't interested. I thought you might be. No, we are interested. It's just yeah. we have other stories and, and yeah. other topics well, let's, that let's, as well. Let's, uh, I mean, one of the things that was on our list was the fact that this year in the United States there has been more than one mass shooting per day. Okay, So 365 days, there's more than 400 of them, and a mass shooting is four people. Or more. Or more. Now, in this country, right, uh, so of the, four, of the roughly 400 that have, that have happened, We've now had the one in San Bernardino, which turned out to be uh, two Muslims. So, of course, that's getting a staggering amount of press, and it's being echoed by particularly the, the Republican candidates on the campaign trail. But my question is, what about the other 399 white guys who went around shooting people in the United States, you know, to, do, to bring us up to that total of more than 400 mass shootings in this country in a year. Which is a, a disturbing trend. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I don't know. I'm just not interested in that, really. No. I mean, doesn't uh, doesn't I'm interested in, look, mm -hmm. Islam is, they have, there's two, uh, well, there's several yeah. things about Islam that's different from Christianity, for example. I mean, you talked about uh, Christianity, Christians and Jews, how they had their day. But there is one thing in, the, in both Judaism and Christianity that is missing in Islam. Okay. And that is that verse that says, uh, render unto uh, God what is God's and unto Caesar what is Caesar's. I might have that backwards. Yeah. There is no such thing in Islam. Well, actually, actually the, the Christian 
Christian Bible, okay, um, Christianity includes the Old Testament, which is the basis for Judaism. Uh, Islam includes the Old and New Test Testament, plus the um, you know the the book, the Quran, and and the stories about uh, uh, Muhammad. Okay, so in other words, yes, it is in fact included in their religion. It's part oh, of. Oh, it's the not. No, it, it it does not. It may include. That's good for your include some Yeah, we should, you, should, you should call up and you could call up next hour. We could talk about yeah, that. This is good for the next yeah, show. Yeah, exactly. Show. I, we'd love topic. we'd love to have you call back in. We've got another call in show that's going to happen right after this one. Yeah, that's not going to happen. I thought you might be interested, but uh, we are we are interested, interested in the in the <laughs> casual surface. Uh, you know. You know, the, 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 you're not really interested. No, I agree. I agree. I agree of, with you. Eighteen hundred years of Islam. Okay, Pat. Thanks for the call. Okay. Sorry about that. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> we are interested, but we can't devote the whole show to one topic because yeah. that's not what the show's about. Yeah, and but it, I think it would be a great topic for the atheist show. It, it definitely would. All the wars yeah. for, over religion and. Yeah. and I mean, the th the thing is that, you know, we talk about comparing. Uh, the the Muslim stuff with the Christian stuff. I mean, what happened is at the Council of Nicaea. Uh, uh -oh, we're still talking. Yeah, we're about still it. talking about it. And then I'll I'll leave. I'll, Actually, this will be my thing, and then we'll move on. But the <laughs> but the but the thing is that at the Council of Nicaea, okay, Christianity became the official state religion of the Roman Empire, and it was spread on the point of a sword. Okay, plain and simple. Right. So okay. all those people that that. But you'd like to think that throughout hundreds of years since then that we've evolved a little bit more. We've and I think evolved that's a, whole, so a whole bunch. That's what's so disturbing about what's happening with yeah. ISIL, is is the violence. It's like in the beheadings. It's it's so different from what we look at as civilized society, yeah. and it is like going back hundreds of years. Yes, it to is. Bar Absolutely. Barbarism. Okay, so I was going to make a tie with one of our subject Go matters. Ahead. Political correctness. Yeah. So Pat just called in, and and he kind of was alluding that that um, Hillary Clinton, you know, didn't want to, you know, upset any Muslims. And Pat's basically saying they're all wanting violence. All yeah. Muslims mm -hmm. want violence. They're taught that from the time that they're children, and that's kind of a pol politically incorrect thing to say, right? Because we want to be nice to the Muslims who are in this country, who are who are very upset that they're being targeted by hate pe people who hate yeah. mo all Muslims. Mm -hmm. And and so you and I were having a conversation before the show started about uh, uh, editorial George Will wrote about yeah. political correctness that you can agree. And then we had a discussion about, well, what is political correctness? Because yeah. I consider it to be polite. Like, you don't say um, offensive things to people. You, you put it in a way, you can make your point without being rude. That's kind of what I'm... That That's to me political correctness. What's your definition? Depend, depends on, on what your point, what the point that you're trying to make is. Okay, so. So give me an example of what you would call over overt too much political correctness, um, if you can think of one. Well, I could I can think of a bunch of them. Okay. Um, I mean, one of the things is. Um, what did how, George how do Will say? Well, what George. George basically said that um, political correctness was the problem, okay, the, and essentially said it's the left doing it. And I go, excuse me, no, it's not. It's there's huge amounts of political correctness on you know both sides. on both sides, and you know the game is, uh, you know, one group of people is trying to get hate speech, for example, off the campuses. You know, we don't want groups of skinheads running around with baseball bats. You know threatening people, let's put it that way, whether, you know, it's blacks on campus or, right. you know, homosexuals. Violence. We don't gay, like violence. Gay and lesbian. Right. If you say homosexual, that's a bad word. Somebody will be offended, and that's, there's an example of political correctness. Oh, right. Well, there's all kinds of, like, it used to be not okay to say queer. Yeah. And then the, the queer gay people said, let's embrace that word, yep. and now it's cool to call people queer. That's right. So, but you know what? I think that that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. Like, you know, I mean, if, if you really find something, somebody calls you a name yeah. and, and it's, it's like offensive to you, mm -hmm. you can say, you know, I, I really don't like that. Could you just say, call me Joe? Yeah. Well, let's, you know? let's, I mean, I think that's polite. It's let's nice. take another issue off of our list, okay. which is 
Uh, well, I mean, this one we're not crossing we out because we're, we're, we're not we're not done. Oh, um, oh we're going to do political we're, correctness? We're, we're talking know. about Jews torturing Jews in Israel. Oh, right. Okay? Right. Now, if the Israeli police torture Palestinian, nobody cares. Well, you might get a little couple lines. Well, what will happen is somebody will stand up and scream at them and, and get shot. Okay? <laughs> so... I mean, it might get covered in the media, but it won't be that big of a deal. Exactly. Right. But... If what happens is the police get a hold of um, some Jews in Israel and start torturing them to get information out of them, um, it becomes a big deal. And that right. was on, um, you know, as I was waking up this morning <laughs> at uh, 5 a.m., um, it was on uh, NPR. They were talking about that today, that there's you know, all these protesters in the streets because the police have been torturing Jews. And like, why are Jews more highly esteemed than the Palestinians? Bingo. Right. Bingo. Well, that you could that's the, that could be a class thing. It could be a religious thing. It could. I mean, if if it's all right, look at what happened with O.J. Simpson case. Here's a black man. Yeah. But he's a wealthy, famous black man. Exactly. So he had the money and he had the fame and. You know, it's pretty much so, so agreed that he killed his ex-wife. Okay, and so you, you take the lover. position that he killed her. I, it's the court disagreed, but right. said, well, said that mean, the state to failed to make its case. Right. But the you know, I tend to think that yeah, he probably did. Well, I and think everybody kind of tends yeah. to think that. <laughs> but so, he got off because of his fame and money. You can have all the justice. Even though he was a, he, he, yeah. he is an African-American man. See, in America, you can have all the justice that money can buy. Right. Now, if you're in the Middle East, okay. Um, the Palestinians, that's my point. They're not, there you go. They're, they're poor and they're desperate and they have no power. Exactly. And so they, when the and they don't have, get tortured, that's a story. Yeah, and, and, the but they don't have a public relations machine is the, right. is the issue. Right. And so They don't own the media. <laughs> they don't own the media. There you go. And so... Um, we have different levels of justice applied to different groups. But would, would you call that political, politically incorrect to say that? I mean, how, how are you tying the two topics together? Many people will claim that if you say anything disparaging about Israel and the Jewish faith, that that's politically incorrect. But I know, I know people born and raised in in uh, Israel that will say that. that yes, there are, there are. The refusal. So, so yeah. what we have is, is, the, is, the, is the famous two-by-two two matrix. Okay, you're Jewish, you're not Jewish. <laughs> you're, you're, you know, say, you're pro-Israel, you're saying Israel's got right. some problems. Well, that's like, I can say There's my people mama. People in all four boxes. I can say something bad about my mother, but don't you say anything bad about my mother. There you go. Right? That's that same mentality. Yeah. Um, so, but I don't know if that's, I don't know. Political correctness, it can be overdone, for sure. It we can be like so worried about breaking a little eggshell here and there that we never really say what really needs to be said. Yeah. I agree. But basically, it's nice to be polite. And if you're going to have a conversation where there's going to be disagreements or maybe an unpleasant topic, well, I think it's, it's okay to try to do it in as polite and tactful and diplomatic way as possible. Well, the game, the game is right now, um, and this is, you know, personal experience going on right now, is... I'm on the police commission in Eugene, and I won't do it again. It's just, it's insane. Um, How long have you been on it? Three and a half years. And Dog years. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah. It's, well, thank you I've, for doing that, though. I've, I've been the sort of token liberal on the Oh, on the you're committee. the only one? Yeah. How many are on the, the board? Uh, there's 12 total. Two city councilors, a, wow. um, there's, there's eight regular commission man members, two city councilors. Poor Joe. <laughs> <laughs> and a person from the Human Rights Commission, a person from the uh, uh, Civilian Review Board. Okay. So, um, when, I, when I first got on, um, I talked to the guy I was going out, and the question, of course, you always ask is, why are you leaving? Why, why don't you, because you can go for two four-year terms. And his response was, um, it's a waste of time. They're going to neutralize you in every way they possibly can to shut you up, and they're going to outvote you. Totally. Is this the Citizens Review Board for no, the police, or what? No, this is the Police Commission. So, what is your job as uh, okay. to be on the board? What is your? Role? Well, it depends on who you listen to. If oh. you if you listen to the majority on the Police Commission, our job is to rubber stamp uh, policies um, to give the police the tools to do the job. Okay. Right. Which, of course, begs the question: What is the job? Right. Okay. 
And the answer to that question is to punish bad guys. And so that begs two questions. The first is, who are the bad guys? Or rephrasing that first question a little bit, who decides who the bad guys are? The bad guys within the police department? No, the bad guys out in public. Oh, see, now I would think the job would be to prevent the bad guys from doing bad things, like my car getting broken into. That, I would say that's what the job is. Because rarely has anything ever happened where I'm protected yeah. before it happens. Well, I got... But you need to prevent things. Well, two years ago, two years ago, three years ago. So I'd been on the, the commission about six months. Uh, well, actually, I take it back, a, a full year. Because it was right before the first um, uh, retreat that we take. They take a, a retreat in May to decide what we're going to work on. And uh, I had been renting a, a place to shop where I had tools and stuff, and it had been broken into, and about $4,000 worth of tools was taken. Ah, oh, you're making me feel better about my books. <laughs> yeah, so, you know. <laughs> it could be worse, right? It could be worse. could be much worse. Okay. Um, but, you know, the police came out and took a report and essentially said, there's nothing we're going to do or could do. And it's like, I'm thinking to myself, well, what are, what's your... <laughs> yeah, how, why don't you follow Craigslist or, you know... <laughs> Go to, you know, here's a list of all the junk that's been stolen, you know, and when it starts showing up, you know, find out who's selling this stuff. Well, that's your job. That's my job. That's what they want you to do. Exactly. So, um, but the thing is, you know, I sort of accepted that there was nothing, that it was part of the reality and there's nothing to do about it. I mean, Eugene is the bicycle theft capital of the universe. I mean, Larry, who's one of the people at the oh, station. Oh, bike it's on. Twice recently. Oh, he needs to get one of those really good locks. He had one. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Ah. So. And that's all. Larry doesn't have a car, so that's a big deal. It is a big deal for him. Yeah. Ah. But um, he's had his bicycle stolen twice, and you know, I've had I've had pieces taken off of mine. Yeah, I've had. Well, not here, but I've had two bikes yeah. stolen as well. So. But you know, that's part of it, and and car what they call car clouts, which is people breaking into cars and taking stuff, that kind of stuff. You, your now there, now there, people are taking mm -hmm. packages off of people's front porches mm -hmm. that are being delivered by FedEx and UPS. And yep. So I heard know, somebody's homemade caramel corn was in one of those that Grandma sent. Yeah. The um, but Isn't again, bad? we get we get back to the question of what's the job? Okay. Um, since there's really no way that the police can stop these kinds of things. I disagree totally. Well, how, how are they could have been patrolling the Holiday Market parking lot as well as the Valley River parking lot yep. as well. I mean, that is a known thing that happens during the holidays. Yep. So why aren't they patrolling these parking lots? Mm -hmm. What else are they doing? They do a lot of things. You know, I don't. I don't. As I as I look to at prevent it, prevent theft. I guess this is. Well, there's a lot of stuff going on. I mean, they respond to calls for assistance. I mean, there are. Um, I forget the numbers. It's like 80,000, 90,000 calls a year. For assistance to what? Um, I've fallen and I can't get up? Some, some of it is that. Some of it is um, domestic violence. Oh, um, yeah. That's a big know, issue. Yeah. You've, you've got all kinds That of, is a big issue. Yeah, you've got all yeah. kinds of stuff. And um, I did, uh, about six months ago, have a situation where um, I was living in, in a group house and... and uh, where the police were called there because of problems with uh, one of the roommates. Okay, and so yeah, I, you know, yeah, no, that's I, I got to experience. I got to be a, a consumer of police services, mm -hmm. which was which was a real eye opener. And you know, a lot of the people. Every, I've had a really good experience with the Eugene police, and I've and I've had some. I, I think I was that, walking down from Skinner Butte one day. Yeah and with my dog, and mm -hmm. there was a bunch of people up there. I didn't really pay much attention. And I heard a car slowly approaching from behind, and I thought it was some jerk, but it wasn't. It was a police officer, and he, he said, hey, is everything okay? How was it up yeah. there for you? Did you get hassled? Are you all right? And, and I was like, wow, that was really yeah. nice. Well, I, ver I very much appreciated that. Well, one of the problems that we have right now is the whole question of what do you do with the homeless? Right. And so that's a big part of what the job is right. for the police. Because our community, there's huge numbers of people who think that the job of the police is to chase the homeless away. And that this would be a well, better place the if they the people with the money that want to go downtown and they don't want to deal with these unpleasantries exactly. are the ones who have the clout. It's, all, it's always there about the people with the wealth and the power. Yeah. 
And it's the same old story over and over again, right? Okay. So as someone sitting on the police commission who says, <laughs> no, it is not okay to, you know, hassle, hassle these people, people. who are already struggling. <laughs> Bingo. Okay, that makes you unpopular on that uh, thing. And so there are people who do not want to hear that kind of stuff. And so that becomes forbidden speech. So political correctness plays in that thing. We don't want you to say these kinds of things. And we don't like the way that you say them. Okay, so is the, is the offense the fact that I'm pointing out that there's these problems, or is the offense... that's not political correctness. It most certainly it's is for many, many people. No, that's see, how I, the game is played. See, I think that that's not political correctness. Then, I think then what's your definition of political correctness? Being polite. Yeah. Being polite. Being thoughtful in your speech and how you present things. Okay. That's political correctness. Okay. So instead of calling someone a name, a homosexual or a different a minority race uh, a slant of a slur, you just say it in the most appropriate way that you know. And if you offend them, say, I'm sorry, I did not mean to offend you. Well, but that's you can fine. speak your truth without but offending if, people. But if what happens is you, t you, okay, so the situation that I'm in right now, uh -oh. okay, uh, here we go. This is more than a news story. This it's is more than a news story. It's all about Joe. It's all about Joe. <laughs> is that um, when I was an undergraduate at MIT, um, Several thousand police officers were brought onto the campus. And what they, year was this? It was the day was May 11th, 1972. It was okay. a Thursday, and um, they came in. And was they, there a protest going on? What was going on um, that they called it, got called in? There was actually a uh, an anti-war rally on the Boston Common. It had been permitted. There was a stage. Totally legit. Stage. They had all the permits that they needed. Everything, you know, was was copacetic. It had been done. You know, it had been a regular feature. Um, they brought huge numbers of police in from all over New England, um, literally by the thousands. State police were in. State police, different, other other towns, states, whatever. Cities? They, okay, so the number happened? of police coming in. <laughs> there's a. As I left the campus, okay, and there's some stories associated. It, it was quite the experience. Let's put it that way. As I left the campus. The Harvard Bridge had been closed. That's Massachusetts Ave going over the Charles River. And so I was walking from Cambridge, which is north of Boston, into Boston. And so when, I fin when they finally let me go after threatening to, be to beat me to death, um, the, uh, I walked across the bridge by myself. It was completely, you know, I had the whole bridge to myself. And I'm, watch I'm looking back and Memorial Drive from Kendall Square okay, to the BU Bridge, which is how far you could see. That's 1.6 miles. Had buses parked six wide across the entire thing. They towed the cars off it, they closed it, they parked buses, and they brought police in. So and they basically were surrounding the area. Yeah, that's, that's between 800 and 1,000 buses if you do the numbers. Wow. Okay, so figure at 10 per bus, you know, that's eight to 10,000 officers. Um, so that, that day happened, and here we are in the police commission talking about a policy for civil disturbances, which gets oh. to clubbing people. Oh. So here we have a policy where we're going to be clubbing people, and I'm saying, excuse me, I have a real problem with getting to clubbing people as fast as this policy seems to be going. Like that's the first thing they do, right? Well, no, it's later in the list. Later in the list, okay. But um, the policy could have been better. Right. And so you brought... So I brought up my, my thing, and, I, and as, I'm, as I'm looking, people are, you know, I'm get, it's like, no, you're lying, this is not oh, they true. They didn't believe it, they because didn't believe it didn't it. get much media coverage, right? It got zero media coverage. It was completely removed from um, the news media. Was this the before only, the or only, after the Kent State shooting? This is after Kent State after and Jackson State. State, and um, it was that year. Why do year, you think that happened? Well, because that was 1972, and Richard Nixon was running against George McGovern and put out the word that the campuses were to be quiet over the summer. Oh, okay. He was the law Whatever and order. Whatever it takes. He was the law and order candidate, and they liked that. They did that, and it, they MIT felt like they were losing control. That was a big part of it. Bingo. And there was a lot of power with the youth rising up, and it was scary. Okay, so I have a similar yeah. story. So, but to finish. Now it's about Pam. Now it's about Pam, but to finish, to finish the thing up, <laughs> oh, okay. people didn't like my story, so they picked out a small section of a lo much longer story and said, you didn't say that right, and we've got an anonymous complaint, and you have to make a public apology to them. And I said, no, I'm not going to do that. 
Why would you have to make a public apology? Because I didn't. Because I. Because I slandered. Or you disagreed with. Well, no, actually, the the whole thing at MIT started out. Oh, uh, so you think that they were saying you were lying, and you need to make a public no, apology? No, it's not that. No. Oh. It's what I did was when I when the before the thing started. This is one of those things that sort of now prints on you. It's like where you were when Kennedy died, or. Um, uh, or when 9-11 happened, you know where you were when, when you found out about 9-11. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, that whole experience is like, the memories are very vivid about the, the oh, entire... Oh, yeah, that's the kind of thing you'll never forget. I'll never forget You'll never that. forget that. And as I was going, this is before all of this began, and I was, take, I was going to run laps on the track. Okay, so um, I'm walking past, and there's this group of students dancing. And so I ask, and somebody says, yeah, that's the Hillel group. And they were, there these big speakers out there playing klezmer music, and they're dancing. And I describe these students as being, you know, skinny, okay, and small, the, the, the males. And I, I remember there was about 20 of them, about 10 couples. And the women were sort of overweight. And I describe them in that manner, indicating that they represented zero threat to the police who were oh, coming onto right. the campus. Right. And that was considered to be a slur against the Jewish faith. And I've been sanctioned for that. Really? Yeah. Huh. And so now... So you think that was a political correctness bingo. type of thing? Bingo. Yep. Oh, okay. So we picked that out. They didn't like the bigger story about the fact that the police came on campus and killed seven people. Okay? Right. So they're trying to get you on something. Bingo. That's the, that's the, the biggest thing they could get on you is thin, bingo. thin guys and overweight women. So the thing is that, that now they have passed a gag rule. Okay, they have these eight points. That I'm you have the commission? To, yeah, you have to be nice. Yeah, everything you say, you have to be nice. Well, you, I don't know. What's wrong with being thin? Some people like that. Well, <laughs> whatever. It's, it's the nerd uniform. And the reality is, see, I didn't even add this at the time, but uh, this, group, this group of kids um, were wearing pocket protectors. And slide rules hanging well, on their that's, belt. Well, that's cool to be a nerd now. Well, it's getting that way. Thank oh, you yeah. very much, Neo and the Matrix and all the rest of this stuff. Well, yeah, and all these computer geeks. Yeah, They're even cool. even even uh, the the Ray character in the new Star Wars movie. She's a geek. Oh, I can't she, wait to see she, you've she, seen it. She, oh yeah. Hey, this is a good segue because <laughs> on our list is Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, right. But we're segueing. But we, you know, you were getting to the whole thing about political correctness. So for the people saying that I'm a problem, my telling this story is politically incorrect because it offends them. Oh, okay, okay? so... There we go. Are we done? We, we can move on. I want to get off of Star Wars, because you know what, we only have 15 minutes left of the show, and yeah. one of the, my most important topics have not been brought up. So, I was at the Holiday Market today, which is at the Lane Event Center, Okay. and there's a very exciting initiative <sighs> petition signature sheet being circulated, yeah. and this is to stop aerial spraying of poisons in our forests. And uh, this is the Lane County Freedom from Aerial Spraying of Herbicides Bill of Rights. So this is the community rights people, which is um, kind of uh, Tom Lindsay from the Center for Environmental mm -hmm. Legal Defense was at the Public Interest Environmental Law mm -hmm. Conference a couple of years ago, packed ball, the ballroom, the EMU mm -hmm. ballroom. And it's a new approach in how to um, help for social justice, the environment, mm -hmm. because basically saying the people have the right, the co community have a, has a right to make laws to protect its own community. So yeah. giving the, the, the people the power. Yeah. So this is what it says here. And so this, thing, this is, um, there's two different petitions that are being um, circulated. One is to get the thousand signatures yep. required to have a statewide ballot, uh, signature uh, petition. Mm -hmm. Um, to get, you know, probably 60, 70,000 signatures or more. And then the other one's for Lane County. So there's, and that one has actually already been approved, and, and we need mm -hmm. to get the signatures to get it on the ballot. So this is what it is. It's the Lane County Freedom from Aerial Spraying of Herbicides Bill of Rights. We, the people of Lane County, assert that the practice of aerial spraying of herbicides on Lane County's forests is causing serious chemical contamination of our county's people, wildlife, ecosystems, air, and watersheds as well as terminal degradation of our soil. A large number of herbicides being used, among them but not limited to 2,4-D, glyphosate, and atrazine have been proven harmful to both humans and the environment. 
-hmm. We, the people of Lane County, acknowledge that the World Health Organization recently determined that glyphosate is probably carcinogenic to humans and that 2,4-D is possibly carcinogenic to humans. And there is mounting evidence linking a wide variety of herbicides to many significant negative health effects. We, the people of Lane County, assert that the practice of aerial spraying of herbicides leads to considerable airborne drift, diffusion, disbursement, and volatilization that ultimately exposes residents and their property, crops, livestock, pets, landscaping, and edible food gardens to toxic chemicals. Um, there's more, but, but I guess you, know, you can get the, the gist of it, right. Yeah. So um, one of the things that happened in the state legislature is there was going to be, I think it was Beyond Toxic sponsored a bill to basically just inform people when these aerial sprays were going to take place that they could be affected by. Yeah. And that got ousted. And we all know the timber industry is hugely uh, influential with our legislators because they basically buy them off through campaign donations. So this is really the only way... that's politically correct saying that? It's the truth. This is truth TV. Right, Jeff? I see. I didn't call them. I just said the timber industry. I didn't... I didn't they're, they are what they are, right? See, that's that's the point. Is for example, wait a if minute. You, no, that's well, not the point. Okay. The point is. Go ahead. We're, this we're, you is know, how bring it we're back to political correctness. Uh, thing. No, yeah, yeah, yeah we yeah. did that. The point is, this is how we're going to get this banned. We don't need. You know, it will be more expensive for them to either manually remove the weeds yeah. or. Um, on the ground, apply and, and if they the, move, the remove the weeds, they can bring it to Seneca and burn it at the. Uh, See, that's on the, the list too. Yes, it is. So I'm just I'm just urging people to um, to sign this, and then when it gets on the ballot, to vote it in. Because personally, a friend of mine, a neighbor, they had clear cut Mount Zion out in Dexter, yeah. and she didn't know it, but yeah, they aerial sprayed, and she ended up having uh, health issues with mm -hmm. her lungs for two weeks. Her dogs were sick. She had no idea what was happening. She saw the helicopter. She didn't know. She's kind of mm. new to the area. So uh, it's just ridiculous. Just to save them some bucks so they yeah. can make more money at the risk of everybody and everything else. It's, I mean, Dexter's not the only place Fine. where this is a problem. I mean, no, Triangle Lake has been... Triangle Lake has been well documented. Very, very... Well, this is Lane County, though. Yeah. So yeah. if you want to get Triangle involved... Triangle Lake is in, in Lane County. That's what I said. It's yeah. Lane County. Yeah. Well, Dexter is Lane County. It's all Lane... This, the, the petition is for Lane County. Yeah. And then there's a statewide one that we're trying mm -hmm. to get. So there is um, regular meetings the third Monday of every month from 6 to 8 p.m. at the First United Methodist Church, 1376 Olive Street. If you want to get in, uh, involved with the Community Rights Lane County, or you can go to communityrightslanecounty.org. And I want everybody that is watching this right now to go, all two of you. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll keep, you, I'll keep um, everyone uh, pretty much up to date as more information. Yeah. There's, there's going to be a whole bunch of ballot questions and one of the things that's been playing in the editorials in the Register Guard is um, this conflict. I mean there are, you know, the industry is paying for oh, some of these right. to go on. There's, there's and, 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 and certain people within the industry are sponsoring competing things, you know, right. where they're kind of attacking each other. Yeah. And then of course there's all the ones that uh, the citizens are going to put on. So it's, uh, you know, there's this discussion that, that there's sort of a war on the ballot uh, shaping up in Oregon. You know, this is the only way really to have direct democracy right now because our representatives are not representing us. They're yeah. representing big money interests. And, and so that's what they need to do in order to get elected, which is the problem. Right. So well, all right, so let's, we can talk about Bernie Sanders. We could. So Bernie Sanders is not taking any PAC money. Nope. His average donation, I think, is like 30 Five bucks. 35 bucks. So, he, and people like us are giving what little bit we can, but because there's so many of us yeah. that, yeah. that get it, and we the people want a representative that represents mm -hmm. we the people, not the yeah. corporate corporations of America, are, are, are finally waking up enough yeah. to um, fund him. And he's quite successful. You won't find that much in the mainstream media, yeah. but he's doing very well. He, you know, he's doing reasonably well in the polls. They're not giving him the media coverage that he needs nationally to develop the name recognition to compete with Hillary. And at the same time, I mean, there, there was a couple articles in the paper uh, this past week talking about um, access to the Democratic Party's voter lists. Right. And they've been kind of giving them a hard time about that. It's like, 
you know it's it's as though this group of people is supporting hillary so we're not going to give you access because you know we don't like you and we want hillary to win so did you watch the debate i didn't didn't get to do it That's because they talked about that and it was really yeah. interesting because bernie was very firm that this had happened before yeah and that they kind of everybody was like that, that they did not look at the information but it was sent to them yeah and that they didn't talk about it. he's like he goes i want to know why this is happening because yeah. i think he he has a sneaky suspicion that they've been trying to get something on him yeah and so i i want to know why this is happening too so. i i think i think your analysis is essentially correct that thus far he's been pretty squeaky clean yeah. and if you know it, it's kind of in a certain way i sort of look at it as the same problem that the clintons had in the 1990s you know, if we can't get them for this, we'll get them for this other thing. If we can't get them for that, we'll get them for something else. If we can't get them, we'll get them for something else. In other words, people, and, and it was interesting because there's a, um, a documentary called, um, oh man, I'm, I'm, I'm losing the title. It'll come to me. Um, the Power of Nightmares um, is the name of the documentary. And it's three uh, one-hour segments played on uh, British television and definitely worth uh, watching. You can, you can I'm find it up on it down YouTube. Right now. Um, and one of the things that's in there is some interviews with some of the people who ran the anti-Clinton campaign during the 1990s. And the guys, and, and they're asking them, and what about this? And the guy says, what, it, total nonsense. And what about this other total nonsense? But you, you made an issue of it anyway. Yeah, we did. Okay, and this other thing completely meaningless and nonsense. It was just a way to attack well, constantly. And in the news, which I have, which yeah. I probably won't get to, but the whole Rob Handy thing, what happened to Rob Handy, the county yep. commissioner, mm -hmm. who um, you know, got accused of having secret meetings um, along yeah. with, uh, I think, Bozovich and Stewart, but they got you know, their names taken off, so it was just the two progressive commissioners, which is Sorensen and yep. Handy at the time. Um, it's the same thing. They, they had this letter that was sent in January about yeah. using some of the money he had to pay for his attorney fees to fight mm -hmm. this suit. Yeah. And it surfaced two weeks before the election. So all of a sudden, oh, Rob Handy, he's, he's such a bad guy. Well, I was actually working on his campaign at that point. And it was, it was ridiculous. Um, and, and that's what they do. They don't, they don't really care if it's honest or the right thing. Well, it's, it's, the it's just about surprise. getting, yeah, it's just the about October getting surprise. the guy they want out out and making them look bad, even if it's all there's no foundation to it or it's been trumped up and made to look really bad when there it's in, not. Bad. Therein lies, you know, my getting hauled over the coals for telling a story that people didn't want to hear. All right. Okay. Well, thank you for telling the story. Now you got it out. Have well, you told I, that story I, before on uh, Public Access TV? No, actually, I, I don't think I have. Well, I, there you go. You know, but the thing is, it's far from complete. It's, I bet if I, you Googled it right now, I bet some of the students that were there have put stuff on the Internet about it. When's the last time you tried to find something on it? Um, a few years ago, actually. I bet you there's, I bet there, you people like you have written something up or maybe well, put well, it actually, in Wikipedia. <gasps> Yeah. Put it in Wikipedia and have other people add their stories. Could, could do that. I to suppose. validate it, yeah. The um, see, we have we have the internet, we which do is have free the for the time being. And I, I really, you know, I keep saying to myself, I should sit down and write the whole thing up. You should. Because I mean, it's it would take, you know, my guess it, is by the time I got done with it, it'd probably take 15, 20 pages. Put it on Wikipedia, and then other people, students that were there, can add to it. Yeah. I think that's a great idea, don't you, viewers? Call now and let us know. 541-790-6617. This is a live call-in show. But, Tell all your friends. But, you know, it actually, it, it does appear there, um, the Tech, which is the uh, campus newspaper, there, there were three camp, there was actually four campus newspapers at the time, um, one of which went defunct uh, over that summer. But um, the Tech, which is the main administration paper, and, you know the, the you know the campus puts out right kind of like the emerald uh, yeah the Uva. exactly and uh, they you know they wrote the following day they wrote the thing up but I mean MIT was and closed it disappeared they quickly. yeah after you know later in the day I mean the whole campus was trashed they uh, I mean it's several million dollars worth of damage. So this begs the question, if, if this happened at MIT and nobody heard about it, how many other campuses uh, My happen? understanding is it's nine or ten. Really? Yeah. So I've, those are the know, stories. I've, I've talked to people over the years about this. and um, You've heard others. 
Yeah, but again, it's it was largely removed from the uh, news. I mean, Wikipedia. Well, yeah, but again, you know, you look at it. None of the television stations in Boston covered it. The the Globe, which is a paper of record, and the Herald, nothing. And this was after Kent State. This is after Kent State. Oh, so the last thing they wanted was more violence on campuses by the police and. Precisely. Yeah. In other more, words, they wanted to do the violence. More uprising, more of the people. So. So I was reminded of the WTO protest in Seattle, which mm -hmm. I was at in 1999, yeah. which was amazingly powerful. And it was a wide variety of people. It was the pilots. It was, it was the union people. It yeah. was the environmentalists, the just, uh, social justice. All of us were together. Yeah. We took over Seattle. Yeah. The, the, the media covered the few violent people yep while thousands upon thousands of peaceful people were standing up against the World Trade Organization. Mm -hmm. And then what happened? 9-11. 9-11 happened in 2001, and boom, everybody was afraid of being a quote-unquote eco-terrorist. Yeah. So that's what they do. They control the media, they get rid of the, they, they make the stories slant towards their mm -hmm. viewpoint, yeah. and, um, or they just get rid of the story altogether, like yeah. what you were saying. Yeah. Okay, we got one minute and fifty-five seconds. What so is on our list? That we didn't that we didn't hit, huh? Okay, so oh, you yeah, climate, let's see, climate change oh. has dis has, has off the radar. Yeah. Go on. Yeah, what happened? <laughs> I was at a party last night, a little solstice party. Yep, yeah. I did celebrate the solstice. Everybody can celebrate the days getting longer, right? Yeah. And there was about fifteen people in their twenties and I asked a group of them, so are you guys concerned about the global warming climate crisis? that yeah. is only going to get worse and that your future life is, eh, not really. Yeah. And it was kind of upsetting to me. Mm -hmm. But I understand not wanting to think about it, but it's only going to get worse. Well, I've, worse. I've actually had some conversations with millennials who just sort of close the thing out by saying, um, it's your fault. You know, old people created all the problems and um, therefore it's your fault and, you know. Well, yeah. it's not my fault because I would love to have clean renewable energy. Um, it's the corporation. Yeah, the but you weren't, you weren't successful, so obviously it's your failure. Well, maybe if everybody joined in. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm but tired of that. Our, we <laughs> went to war. We. I'm like, you know, I protested that war, that's and I've right. been yeah. So I'm not including myself in that. It's not my fault. I've been I've been talking and working on environmental and climate change for 20 years. I know you have been longer. So yeah. don't blame me. Yeah, and it's it your pretty. silence will not protect you. <laughs> no, it won't. It's an interesting world that we are that we are living in, and it's getting more interesting by the day. But so what else? Is down the hatches. Oh, what else? We have 20 seconds left. Yeah. We have the Seneca biomass plant called Clean and Green, not. Yeah. yeah. And, and Trump, uh, Trump factor. factor. And uh, we had to we had to say his name right because that doesn't get enough media attention. Yeah. Uh, we so did the gun violence. Oh, you had something about Jay Bosovich. Oh no, Which we don't have time for. See you next week. Tell all your friends.